Another inspirational man, Andy Murray, broke another record yesterday after winning at the Queen's Club final for a fifth time. And his mum, Judy, is here with us now. Congratulations to the whole family. <laughs> to the whole yeah. family. Isn't it wonderful? It was great. I think it's always very special to win something on home turf. Exactly. And just going into Wimbledon, nothing better than going it in is, on a win. It's like the perfect preparation, yeah, isn't it? It, it is. Absolute perfect preparation. And how are things going from... I mean, Wimbledon for you, it must be strange because it's kind of like, yes, it's brilliant, but nervy as well. It's kind of scary and exciting. Yeah, I mean, you always look forward to it because it is the biggest event in the tennis world and it's our event, you know, it's on home turf. Sure. But it's, uh, I would say over the last few years, that sort of excitement and nervousness mixed together is probably overtaken by stress. Right. <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> too much expectation now, so it's hard to enjoy it the way that you might want to. No, of course, because, because he has one, which is amazing. But that then again, you know, people are sort of saying, right, let's do it again. You know, that's the thing. Poor guy. Yeah, I know. He, and he, he handles it incredibly he well. Um, and, you know, I think the first time that he played at Wimbledon in the juniors was 2002. So we're now 14 years later. Wow. So he knows what to expect. And he gets such incredible support from the crowd. And he always uses that to his advantage. No, so. very much so. And you've got two champions in the, in the family. I of have, course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for goodness sake, you've got Jamie as well. It's, it's yeah. absolutely brilliant. It really is. Yeah, Jamie won his first slam at the beginning of the year in the Australian Open. He made the final of the doubles at Wimbledon last year. Wow. And he's sitting at number one in the world at the moment. So, yeah, it's all good just now. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Do you guys celebrate? Can you celebrate? Or with Wimbledon coming up, have you, you know, it, Andy's body's a temple, I suppose. Yeah, it is really. I managed to have uh, some champagne last night, but very often, as soon as he's won, yeah. um, he gets carted off to do media for what seems like hours. Oh, so he got maybe five minutes in the player lounge with the family and friends, and then he was off doing media, and then he has to go and see the physio, and then he might get fed and uh, be able to go home. So really not much time to celebrate no, at I all. Guess, I guess not. And of course, he's a daddy now. Yeah. So uh, priorities, <laughs> everything's kind of changed. Has it changed him, do you think? Have you noticed it's changed him in any way? Has he sort of I grown up? I think he's much it? more laid back. Is I he? mean, he was always laid back, right. but I think he's even more laid back mm. now. Oh, that's great. And being a gran. <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it's it? It's lovely. It really yeah. is. I mean, she's, a, she's an absolute poppet. And it's just, it's just great, I think, because that's important to have a good family life round about you, you know, when, you're at, when you're at the top of your game. Yeah, you need to have um, things that you, that you can switch off. Sure. So, you know, the, Kim and Andy always had the dogs and Andy always used to say, the dogs never know if I've won or lost. They, they love me, whatever happens, and they love his smelly socks as well. But, um, yeah, it is. You, and you, need, you do need that balance because yeah. the intensity that you have to play at at the top level and the demands of the circuit, I mean, it's, it's 11 out of 12 months and it's, you know, one country mm. to the next so it's uh, relentless so it is really important to have the switch yeah, off. yeah he's got that he's got that back up and he's very lucky to have such a, a brilliant yourself you know such a supportive family I always remember though I think with you doing Strictly Come Dancing that that really changed people's perception I think because obviously you're sitting watching your son and as you said it's stressful and people always thought oh she's a bit grim <laughs> and a bit grim and you're not you're a real good laugh you really are and then we all saw that in Strictly but of course the only time we ever saw you on the telly was when you were kind of you know it's match point of course you're going to <laughs> As if it's like, no, know. you know. People used to say to me, oh, you do actually smile. And I'd go, yeah, I smile all the time, but not when he's playing. No, indeed. <laughs> well, who would? What, what mum would, for goodness yeah. sake. And I know you do so, such a lot to try and promote tennis because tennis sometimes, I think it's got better, but there is that kind of perception that, oh, it's just for posh people, which is ridiculous. Yeah. And I know you do a lot to try and make sure that more and more young people have got access to, to, a, to a racket and that they, could, they can just go and play. And we find another Andy and another yeah, Jamie. I think uh, you know, I've realised over the last two or three years that there's a, a huge opportunity to capitalise yeah. and grow the game on the back of the profile um, of that, course, that's been created in tennis through Andy's Grand Slam successes and Jamie's. And uh, the Davis Cup in particular, you know, it's really got fans behind tennis as a as a team sport yeah. um, so what I did a couple of years ago was um, I got a van f full of equipment and myself and another coach take that van round Scotland and we take it into places where you wouldn't normally find tennis so right. rural remote deprived and we show the local community how to deliver starter tennis to kids teens or adults That's in great. whatever space they have available and it doesn't have to be a tennis court community hall badminton court uh, school gym yeah. you know wherever so to try and get more people playing but to get more people playing you need more people delivering it so I'm um, building a bigger volunteer workforce that's my goal but I think that's absolutely brilliant it's, it's kind of like you want to put something back you know I mean tennis has been very good to you and your family you've been very good to it it just works doesn't it yeah I mean we I, I love my sport and I love teaching so for me it's all about I, I've learned loads in the last 25 years or so from when I started as a volunteer coach at our local club and uh, I want to share it you know yeah. and so that's really why 
why I do what I do and I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's great to get some more. I, mean, I know they're doing a the thing. It's a fantastic little cartoon, Miss Hit. Um, and this is this is specifically for young girls, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's for yeah. girls. We, we have a problem getting girls into tennis. We have four times as many boys uh, coming into tennis as girls. So I needed to create something that was fun and attractive ah. and very girl specific so it's right. four girls it's six animated characters who each represent a tennis shot and it is delivered by female coaches teachers yeah. parents students so it it uh, increases our female mm. delivery workforce and it gets more little girls playing, uh, sounds playing great. tennis sounds great and your little granddaughter you never know one day <laughs> she might be who, who knows if she's got the aptitude <laughs> and she's got and she wants to do it she's got the perfect teacher in her dad our uncle and you well i'm i'd rather teach her to dance <laughs> Oh, you can do that too. You can do that too. I think that's lovely. Judy, it's always a joy talking to you. Thank you so much. I think the work that you do is absolutely amazing. And of course, good luck to both your boys at Wimbledon. Thank you very much. Thank you.